Hey guys, good morning. Today is April 13th, 2016, and I am 38 weeks pregnant. That probably sounds normal to a lot of pregnant women, but in my case, I never thought that I would reach this part of my pregnancy because I went into preterm labor at 31 weeks and was prescribed nifedipine in order to stop my contractions, which might have worked a little too well <laughs> because I was taken off of the medication uh, last week when I was 37 weeks and I'm still pregnant. <laughs> During the whole six weeks that I was taking the medicine, it started to wear off more often as the weeks went by. Uh, it was originally supposed to stop my contractions for six hours at a time and then I had to take them every four hours because the contractions would start to push through and then they started to push through after only an hour of taking the medicine so it was on the verge of not working anymore this baby really wanted to come out but we wanted to try to make it to 37 weeks at least that way he would be more developed and have less complications when he's born. Everyone, including my doctor, was expecting me to go into labor as soon as I stopped the medicine because of how I was progressing while I was on it. Well, it's been a week <laughs> and I'm still pregnant and I had a false alarm. Well, I can't really call it a false alarm because I am on actual labor right now. It's per normal labor. On April 10th, the night before, I was having some really painful contractions that were starting to get regular. And the next day, they were still there, getting closer and closer together. And I kept waking up to terrible chest pains every single time I would get a contraction. And it would be very hard for me to breathe, and I would start blacking out. <laughs> so something was being compressed in there. And so I decided to go to the hospital to get checked out because I didn't, I've never experienced chest pain during contraction before. And after talking to my friends, they agreed that I should go get checked out just in case. So on the way to the hospital, it was a bumpy ride and my contraction kept getting closer together. They started becoming about three minutes apart. They were about a minute long and they were painful. <laughs> So I thought, this is it. I got everything packed. Ara was at my parents' house. Anthony's parents were on their way here to come pick her up and watch her in our apartment as we planned. And I thought we were going to have a baby. <laughs> when I got there, I was 3 centimeters dilated, 80% effaced, and I had steady contractions. So we waited a little bit. I didn't really explain the chest pains. They went away after a while. He just mentioned that it could be a nerve being pinched whenever I have a contraction because of his position. He is head down. And we waited. After an hour, I still had not progressed. So they had me walking. If you guys checked out our vlog, you would know some of these details. But in case you're new to our channel, I'd just like to explain. <laughs> so they had me walking around the floor for about an hour and did some little squats, some little dancings, little wiggles, bouncings, and all that stuff. I also felt nauseated that day, and I did vomit. Sorry, that's gross. I also lost part of my mucus plug that day. So everything was pointing towards the direction of me having a baby, except I wasn't dilating enough, and I only needed to be half a centimeter more dilated in order to get admitted to the hospital. But my body wasn't cooperating, so they decided to send me home and they fully expected me to come right back <laughs> that same night because everything was regular. The contractions were getting stronger, they were painful. So I went home. Our hospital is about an hour away, so that's really worrisome for me because of the distance. I don't wanna have the baby on the road, <laughs> but it is the best hospital. Uh, they have the, they've, they're known for the best care for their patients, their pregnant mamas, they respect our choices to do things as natural as possible. Pretty much they don't medic they don't intervene medically unless it's necessary. They let labor progress as naturally as possible. And that's why we chose that hospital in the first place, because they're awesome like that. At the same time it's really frustrating because it's far away and very pregnant and hormonal and I just wanted to have a baby already. I was ready, <laughs> but he he wasn't ready. So it's okay. We went home and 
all the progress seemed to have stopped on Monday. My in-laws went back to, they, they're really awesome. They drove 160 miles to come and help out. They took care of us and it's really awesome. Thank you guys so much. I guess it's been a waiting game since then. It wasn't considered a false labor because I am still technically in labor. It's just really progressing very slowly. Today is the 13th, so it's been three days since I went to the hospital. I am still having contractions, although they are kind of far apart now. Last night, I had some really painful ones again. I don't feel like Braxton Hicks contractions because they, they hurt. I feel like labor pains, but they are not like full-on active labor pains, you know, and they're still irregular. I get them about 10 minutes apart and then they drop down to 7 minutes apart and the hospital, the nurse told me at the hospital that unless my water breaks or I have bloody show or I get to the point where my contractions are just so unbearable, I can't go back unless I feel that I need to go back. We technically have not reached my due date, which is April 26th, so they can't medically intervene. There's nothing they can do unless I progress more then they have no choice but to send me home again. I have a doctor's appointment on Friday. That is on April 15th and hopefully by then I would have progressed more. Since I did not give birth on the 10th, I'm hoping to give birth on Saturday uh, the 16th for not really particular reason for the date but uh, just in terms of availability of somebody who can take care of Ara while we're at the hospital. Uh, because I have family nearby but they all work and they all go to school and so they can't really watch her during the weekday at, at a certain time. My awesome in-laws have work too and they live in Southern California and they drive like 160 miles to come take care of her and they plan on coming back on Saturday whether or not I go into labor just to take care of us again because they're that awesome. <laughs> So hopefully if Dexter cooperates, I go into active labor on Saturday morning. That way I could go to the hospital and, and we can leave Bubs at my mom's house. It's the weekend so somebody will be home, she can stay there all day and Anthony's parents can come pick her up at night when they get here. I think they have work until like 5 in the evening and so they'll leave right away. Come here, pick her up, bring her home and then hopefully sometime I can have the baby on Saturday and they can come visit at the hospital. Books can meet her little brother <laughs> on Sunday. Um, that's just kind of what I'm hoping would happen. Of course, I can't predict what will happen. I My water could break right now. <laughs> really, it's a waiting game. I've heard of week-long labors before, but I never really knew what that could entail <laughs> or knew that that would happen to me. Um, I am in labor right now. It's just not active labor. <laughs> I've done a lot of natural things to try to help things progress. Walking around, of course, uh, bouncing around, going up down the stairs, dancing <laughs> with bubs, those kinds of things, bumpy car rides, um, just letting gravity help me for labor <laughs> and also there's spicy food i've eaten some spicy food that'll help as well um, sexy time with anthony <laughs> that helps as well what else have i done um the only thing i have done i haven't done is to take something to help with contractions like what is that raspberry red raspberry leaf tea is that one of them i'm not sure but that helps soften the cervix or something like that or and strengthen the uterus but there's also castor oil which I have heard a lot of horror stories about but that kind of is brought by lack of research before taking them uh, before taking it uh, I've heard some women just chugging a whole bottle of it and they became violently ill after that it's a natural laxative and when it irritates the bowels um, it stimulates your uterus and starts getting contractions more regular. Uh, so I want to bring it up to my doctor and see if he's comfortable with me taking it because it's not recommended until you are on full term, which they consider that now at 38 weeks. I used to be 37 weeks, but now it's 38 weeks, I think. And so I'm going to ask him if, if I could take some, just a tablespoon worth. That's the key to that is to take it. 
responsibly and moderately and not chug a whole bottle. And if he agrees to it, then I want to try it. <laughs> I'm just ready to have this baby. <laughs> and the back and forth between contractions and then everything completely stopping and then having contractions again. Very painful contractions and then stopping again. It's driving me a little crazy. <laughs> also, my skin feels terrible. Feels really itchy and painful but numb at the same time and then I get little tingles randomly somewhere and I'm having a contraction right now. <laughs> I have not felt my toes and my fingertips in weeks. They keep tingling. They won't stop tingling and uh, I, I, I feel like I want to claw my skin off. <laughs> it's a creepy crawly feeling and I just want to hold my squishy little new baby. <laughs> And be done with this. I don't. I being pregnant is one of my favorite things, despite all the discomfort. I love having a belly. <laughs> I love. I just love feeling movements in my belly. I love feeling him move. But the last couple of weeks has just been so uncomfortable. I'm just ready for it to be over. And since he's safely um, okay to be delivered now, then I'm okay with that. <laughs> As for his stats. Uh, this is just from Baby Center. It's an approximation of his measurements. He's around 6.8 pounds at this point and 19 and a half inches long. I was born at 37 weeks and 3 days. She was also... I also had preterm labor with her. I went into labor with her at 34 weeks and she made it to 37 weeks. This time around I went into labor at 31 weeks and I guess I got too much sticky dust from everybody and now he he decided he wants to stay in. Gained more weight in my last doctor's visit, which is good. It's very hard for me to gain weight, even when I'm not pregnant, which was a problem health-wise when I was a teenager in my early 20s. But I'm glad that I'm on the healthy track now, even though I'm still technically underweight in the radar. But because of my height, it's acceptable. <laughs> so that's good. I'm eating well, although I have been feeling nauseated the last couple of days. It's just that everything is being squished. The longer he stays in there, the bigger he gets. The more compressed my organs are, the harder it is to breathe. The harder it is to keep my food down because my stomach is compressed. And so acid reflux, heartburn, all that stuff. And right now I feel like my third trimester and my first trimester are blended together. Not quite as bad at the morning sickness department, but it is back and it's quite uncomfortable, but it's okay. Um, I guess a lot of women complain at this part of their pregnancy, which is normal, but despite all that, I'm just so happy that I made it this far and that I did not have a preemie baby who could potentially have had some health problems. Right now he's healthy, his heart rate is strong, and he's not stressed out, and he's still active, um, not quite as often. Uh, during the day, but he still lets me know that he's okay. He gives me a little nudge, so that's good. Um, despite all of my discomfort, I am just so happy that he has made it into term and that he's going to be okay once he's born. <laughs> so, yeah, being scared for the last six weeks that he would be born too early and that his lungs and his brain are not fully matured and... The consequences of that was very stressful and very scary but we made it this far and I'm so glad that he is passing all the checklists that the doctor has for her, uh, healthy pregnancy I may complain a lot but I'm really thankful <laughs> that um, he's okay that's the only thing that matters so I think that's all that I have for this update everything else is ready Everything is packed, things good to go. It's just him that we're waiting for at this point. I wanted to thank all of you guys for all the support you've been sending us through Twitter and our channel and Facebook. You guys have just been so amazing. Your positive thoughts and your prayers and your well wishes mean so much to us and we really appreciate you guys being so patient with us and um, just being overall awesome. You guys, seriously, we have the best strangelings in the world. I'm probably gonna cry, so I'm gonna stop now. And I just, um, I have a lot to be thankful for, no matter how much I'm complaining about right now. <laughs> so, um, just thank you for everything, guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this 
update and if you want more updates um we don't always get to post videos so we have a twitter account anthony and i will always post there for some reason i can't post on my facebook page through my kindle i don't know why uh the app is weird but we update through twitter so if you guys have not followed us yet please check it out i update res regularly as I can, but I assume that when I go into active labor that Anthony will be taking over. So we have both of our Twitter handlers in the description box below. Please feel free to follow us for updates. And again, thank you for everything. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot. I'm having a good traction. And if you want to, please subscribe for more videos. <laughs> Bye guys. Whew. Totally forgot to show you guys my belly. So. Here it is at 38 weeks. As you can tell it's really low now. I can breathe a lot better. And let me see. His feet are right here. You can feel his little, oh, he's pushing right now. His little toes are right here. This is his butt. <laughs> this is where he normally pushes. And his head is way down here now. So he's kind of like, like this. And I have a lot of stretch marks now, again, like up here. I don't really care about that. <laughs> it's just the itchiness that bothers me. But yeah, look how much lower it is. There he is. Yeah, lower. There's a lot of pressure right here that I feel and a lot of stretching up here. That's really painful for the weight. <sighs> so yeah, and this is new. This wasn't here when I was pregnant with bubs. So yeah, my tummy is now um, scratched up. <laughs> but I don't really care. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind that part very much. Um, so yeah, there's the belly. Ta-da! The only thing is that it's really itchy <laughs> and um, tingly, but that's okay. Um, it'll all go away once. Uh, he's born and also the stretch marks will fade over time so yeah that's that's all that's all there is <laughs>